Hello, so this video is all about how to cull images, how to get from the thousands of frames that we can end up taking with modern digital cameras to the very few important pictures that we either want to work on in post-production or present to our clients or do print or do whatever we wish to do with them. It can be really time consuming and it, what's dangerous I think is that if you take th hundreds or thousands of pictures which the cameras these days can enable us to do, you can actually lose the good ones in amongst it and then time passes and nothing happens and those pictures can be sort of lost to time and just stored onto a hard drive somewhere. So I think culling is very important for everyone regardless of what it is that you're shooting with, whether you're a professional or an amateur. I think it's a very important thing and I think it'd be quite cool just to look back in time a little way just to kind of see where we've come from and where we're kind of going to. So, you know, I started my career shooting with large format and medium format cameras. But that's a whole other story. You know, you took only a few frames of those cameras, but I'm not gonna start there. I'm gonna start in 1999 on one of, kind of, I think it was about my fifth foreign assignment where I was sent to the Caribbean for two weeks. And I, was t I took this camera with me my trusty Canon EOS 1N and a, a couple of other cameras and lenses and all sorts. And I was gonna have to go to, I think, six or seven different islands and shoot a bunch of different things for a travel magazine. Now, I took 50 rolls of film with me and I shot all of them over two weeks. And I thought that was really excessive. And, you know, I couldn't quite believe that I'd burnt through that much film. That was 1,800 frames, if I'm, if I'm correct. And I bought them back and edited them and everyone was happy with the results. But it kind of stuck in my mind of, you know, 50 rolls of film. Good Lord, that's a big sack of film. You know, the darkroom were quite surprised when I went and dropped that, <laughs> dropped that off for processing. But the thing is, is that now, fast forward, what, 20 odd years, and, you know, it's not impossible to shoot that amount of frames in, in one shoot or in one day. And I've actually heard of other photographers you know, shooting many thousands of frames at weddings, for example, and things like that. Now, culling is the process. So the point that I'm making is that we've gone from shooting not that many frames to shooting a vast number of, of images. And I suffer with this personally where I will go on a shoot and I will come back with many hundreds or thousands of images and I don't want to present those to my clients, I just want to present them with the, the pictures that they need. And sometimes that will be literally just a few and other times it will be kind of a, a, what I call a walkthrough edit of the shoot which is a sort of, you know, everything to be included but not to be replicated if that, that makes sense. Now. There are a number of different strategies that I use um, to do this and it's, to be honest it is the bane of my life and these things as always are subjective and so if you have a method I'd really love to hear from you and if you wish for me to go into any more detail about any of the methods I'm going to talk about then just let me know and I will you know do a specific video or ask answer you in the comments. Um, so. So the problem is that we have cameras that are high megapixel, can shoot at incredibly high frame rates and ever increasing frame rates, and we have memory cards that can contain more and more images, buffers that can enable us to shoot more, and you know, so the problem is, is that we're accumulating many, many more images, but we're we're probably only looking for a few bangers out of that um, out of that out of that particular set of pictures that we've got on our memory card from any given shoot. So method number one is in camera. You, you edit in camera, you cull in camera and there's a number of different ways that you can do that. You know the first one is that you delete the pictures that you don't want. Now that can be very effective under certain circumstances particularly if let's say you are trying something where you are let's say you're trying to get a picture of someone um, doing a backflip and they're going to replicate it and do it numerous times until you get exactly the right shot and every time that they do it you're going duh, 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 on the on the motor drive then and, and the, there'll be certain circumstances where the jump just doesn't work or the athlete doesn't take off in which case it's not necessarily a bad thing during the reset to go through and delete the pictures that you absolutely know are of no use now that only really works, in my opinion, under those kinds of circumstances. If you're in any kind of live environment where things are changing or you're not sure if they're replicable or 
you know, you're not quite sure what's happening. I don't really, I, I will very rarely ever delete in camera because I think it's risky. There's a risk associated with it. You know, uh, th there's a circumstance like, for example, corporate head and shoulders where maybe you've shot 50 frames of a person and in 10 of them they've closed their eyes and you know that you're never going to want those pictures with the eyes closed. While you're waiting for the next person to come along, maybe it's not necessarily a problem to delete those 10, let's say. But there is a risk associated with deleting pictures. You can make a mistake, you can delete the wrong frame, you can get confused or you could end up making some kind of mistake. So I would, I would uh, urge people to be very cautious about deleting in camera. You need to, to know that what you're shooting can be replicated and you need to know that you've got clarity of mind to be able to do it properly. The second option is that is to, is to, is to rate in camera. Many, many cameras have the ability to rate your pictures in camera and you can set a button certainly on the 5D, Canon 5D range, you can rate you know between one to five with a rate button and then you can then look at that you can then kind of select those rated pictures in your software later. It takes a little while to set up, but it can be a really effective way. If you're doing, if you're shooting something that is has little bits of downtime in between, it's ultimately the, the perfect chimping solution that you sit there in between going through your cameras and rating the ones that you think are good. I will also say that I use all of the methods that we're talking about today, I use all of them and intermingle them and change them around and use them, maybe one of them or all of them at any given point. And I'd love to hear other people's opinions and other ideas so that I could add to my, my little kind of toolbox of ways to cull. So we can delete in camera, but it has risks associated with it. We can rate in camera, which doesn't really have risks associated with it. Apart from there is a risk, which is that while you're chimping and rating, you're missing a picture that's going on in front of you. And that can happen. And I would again urge that if you're in a situation that is live, where things are happening around you, uh, don't immerse yourself in the back of your camera because you might miss things. The third way that we can cull in camera is just not by taking the picture. <laughs> if it looks rubbish, just don't take it. You know, you don't have to walk around machine gunning everything like I see some, some photographers doing. You know, just wait wait until a better picture emerges or walk and use your legs or use your creative tools to find a better picture. Don't just photograph everything relentlessly, which seems to be a little bit of a uh, habit among some photographers at the moment. Okay, so that's in camera. You know, there'll be some circumstances where it's not right to just not take pictures, depending on what it is that you're shooting. Let's say you're shooting a wedding, you never quite know when the best thing is gonna happen at a wedding. So you kind of just have to shoot and you know, not, not hold back if you like. So there are some circumstances where, where you do need to just photograph everything, just to put all of these things into context. The, the, the second method of, of culling is that you just shoot everything on your raw card you don't worry about deleting anything or rating anything or not shooting anything. You just blat away and you fill your memory card up with nice raw images. And then you come back and you copy it onto your hard drive or your computer. And then you use a certain piece of software before you start editing to go through and, ed and, and, and look at each picture and rate it. And that is often the way that I tend to end up working on commercial shoots. And it's probably the most belt and braces way of working because you have no danger of any of the issues that we talked about in camera. And you will make sure that you look at each picture to make sure that you're not missing anything in the, in the, um, in the final edit. Now the problem can be that it's very laborious and rather dull. And you know, depending on what you've been shooting, it can be slightly soul destroying and hard to get down to the final edit that way, but it's probably the most belt and braces way. And the way that I do it is by using a piece of software called Photo Mechanic, but there are many others where you can view your RAWs really quickly and you can zoom in on the RAW to see. Now you're not looking at post-production or editing techniques you're gonna do at that point. You're not interested in anything like crops or anything like those things. You're just looking for expressions and you're looking for keepers. And I will just flash through a shoot really quickly, like literally one or two seconds a picture, and I will rate the ones that I want to keep. Now, this isn't a final edit. It's just a way to get from, let's say, a thousand pictures to, let's say, two or three hundred, at which point you can then start your final edit process. Maybe it'll be a lot less, maybe it'll be a lot more, depending on what it is that you're shooting. But it's just a way of basically weeding out the chaff 
and then you can move through to the next stage. And um, what will typically happen with this is that you'll go through and rate your shoot of keepers that you want and you'll get rid of the replication and any duds. And then during that process, you'll have got a pretty good idea of the ones that you really think work well. So then what I'll typically do is another second wave kind of cull where, where I'll just pull up the, the, let's say I rate all of my keepers as one star. I'll then go through and look at those and then cull even further down. Maybe, maybe not, depending on the requirement. The third strategy, and I think this is the most interesting one and the one that I like to use when I'm under pressure, is to edit like a news photographer, is to edit like a photojournalist. Now, when I was working for the, the, the daily national newspapers, we would go out on a job, a news job anywhere in the world, and it, we would always be under time constraints. There was always the deadline of the next day's paper, and it was incredibly hard and challenging to get pictures back before the deadline. So when, we, when we'd done the pictures that we were sent out to do, we would then have to select a small number, typically kind of three, four, five, six pictures to send back to London. And the way that we would typically do that, the first edit probably wouldn't be, you wouldn't scrutinise every frame, you would instinctively know <laughs> which were the frames that you liked and you would go directly to them either on the light box if we were shooting negatives, this is back in the day, or on the computer if it was, you know, you'd li literally put the card into a card reader and s search out the, you know, go in and just quickly root out the six frames that you want and copy those straight from the card. That's not typically how I would advise anyone to work, but it's how news photographers tended to work. And you would go in and you would just use your gut instinct. And I think that a lot of the time, for a lot of photographers under a lot of circumstances these days, using your gut instinct to go to the pictures that you know work, when you've got that feeling when you took the picture, and just disregard the rest, because they'll mostly be a waste of your time. I think using that gut instinct technique uh, edit like a news photographer is probably a really good one to add to this list. And obviously the negative side to editing like a news photographer is that you can miss frames and it all depends on what you're shooting. You can miss frames and so what I would do if I use this technique, let's say, you know, I use this technique quite a lot if I have a tight deadline, even if it's a commercial deadline that I'm working to. And rather than rooting through each and every frame, I will just go to the ones that I know work and I will pull them out and I will edit them. But I will keep everything else and before I send to the client, I typically will do a quick flash through or maybe I will send the first select edit to a client if there's sort of a, a very tight deadline. And then I will go through and follow up with a, what I would call a walkthrough edit. And I will then go through and scrutinize every frame just to make sure I haven't missed everything. I probably wouldn't take as long over it as I would take if I was using the, um, you know, the, the, the look at every frame method that I described before. And I would then pick out anything I've missed and add it to the list. But nine times out of 10, I find that actually I just get it all instinctively. So, you know, there's no right or wrong way of doing this. I hope this has helped you to maybe move forward with your editing skill, your culling skills. And if you're filling your hard drives up with pictures, thinking that you'll go back one day and look through them and pull the best ones out, you need to stop doing that and you need to start culling your pictures after each and every shoot so that you're on top of it. I'm guilty of not always doing it. I've got a memory card sitting in my camera right now of a, several hundred pictures that I took in London just the other day and I haven't culled them yet and I should. I should cull those pictures down to, you know, there's probably 20 pictures worth having in that set. I should do that right. In fact, that's what I'm going to do right now. Thank you very much for watching. Let me know if you've got any other ideas on culling, if this has been of any use to you, and if you want me to elaborate on any of these te techniques further. Thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.